Welcome guys. Today we are going to be looking at the view menu, which is like the third menu on the menu bar, the view menu, right? The first thing we are going to be looking at is the views themselves, right? But before we do that, if you're just joining for the first time or second time and you're not subscribed yet, too well to subscribe now because I always drop videos and I always be updating my YouTube um, subsequently so you don't want to miss any subsequent video or uploads that I drop. So when you go to your view menu, the first thing you notice is, like I said in my previous class, we have lines under the tools that separate similar tools from each other. So on the view menu, the submenus, the first uh, group of submenus you have, the uh, address the view actually, right? The view of your object. So we have four types of view. We have the wireframe, the normal, the enhanced, and the pixels. Now the wireframe view is a view that gives a skeletal rendering of your document. So it means that if you have complex things here, let's say for example, we have these uh, four objects with four views. Let's just say you add one more and then bring it out and let's do a G on this. So you press G to go to your field. And let's use maybe a complex field or a pattern field. Let's try a vector pattern field. And let's just reduce this. Uh, I'm just trying to get something. Let's see if we can change this as well. Let's use this, yeah, this one looks cool. And let's reduce it so it's going to have multiple um, fields, multiple shades or pattern of the same pattern. So yeah, we have this. So we have a couple of objects now. So let's look at them in the view. So when we go to view, let's switch it to wireframe. And what you notice is that all the fields go out and what we just have or we are left with is a skeletal representation of everything on the document right so you see there is no blue there's no red there is no color it's just black and plain so this kind of like simplifies the whole stuff and you can just see everything as is all right uh, the next view we have there is called normal. Normal view actually displays everything normally, but it has an aliased edge. An aliased edge is simply a rough edge. When you look at it, it feels rough. It means the resolution that this renders in is normal. It's not very high. It's just there. You know, so if you're working in this mode, if you have a low-end laptop or a medium-scale laptop, you might want to work in this mode so that um, you your, your processing is faster, right? But if you have a high-end laptop, you can always work in the enhanced mode and nothing will ha um, nothing will occur, you know, it will still be cool. And then also, when you finish, you can probably still just go back to your view and switch it to enhanced, which is a better version that actually has a higher quality. You can see how everything looks smoother around the edges automatically when you use the enhanced menu or enhanced view, rather. And then we have the pixels view, which kind of like renders everything like a pixel, right? So you can see everything has tiny tiny square dots or you know like pixel rendering around it so it shows you kind of like how it's going to look like when you render it as maybe a picture or a, a raster format a raster file format right so you want to keep it in normal or enhanced for me i'll keep it in enhanced now under the view menu we still have a couple of other things we have the full screen preview oh and i forgot to mention here that when you render Whichever way you render it doesn't matter when you close it and open it, it usually opens in enhanced view, right? So, um, that's like the default for CorelDRAW 20, 20, I think 2018, 19, and above, right? So, that's like the default. So, you can only work on a particular kind of view while you're working on the document. When you close it and open it, it goes back to that, so to default. Also on that view, we have the full screen preview, right? And the full screen preview has a shortcut F9. What it does is simply it previews everything on your workspace. So when you press, when you hit that F9 or you go to view and say full screen preview, it simply takes out all your uh, panels and the rest of them, you know, your tabs and the rest, and just displays what you have on your workspace, right? All the objects on your workspace. And then you can use escape to take it off. And then we also have under the same view, we have view preview selected only. So in this case, once you select an object, that object will be the only object that will be previewed, right? So when you go to view and say preview selected only, it only previews the selected object. Every other object here is not previewed, they are hidden from your view. So you press escape as well to remove it. Still under the view menu, we have multi-page view. Multi-page view works best for when you have, let's say, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pages. So when you go to view, you can say multi-page view, and then it will line up all your views side by side, you know, make it look like an artboard or something. But if you don't want a multi-page view, 
which is kind of like new. It's not new in this version. It's new in like let's say 2018 or so. And if you don't want it to have a multi-page view uh, feel, you could always go to your view and switch it back to default, right? So default, it's one view per page or one page per view. <laughs> you know whatever you call it. Under your view menu, we still have the zoom in, zoom out, and zoom to fit, right? The zoom in is just your control plus, control and plus. Uh, zoom out is control minus. When you do your control plus, it zooms in. When you do your control minus, it zooms out. And when you hit your F4, it kind of like brings everything, brings it to fit to screen, right? So those are like different views that you have just in case you're trying to get that. So also on the view, we have um, proof colors. Now, what are proof colors? Well, uh, proof colors simply means uh, colors that... Uh, proof colors is like a rendering of... Um, the colors that you might have when you printed the document so let's say you wanted to see let's say you worked on a very beautiful design could you open one let's see if we have something we can open let's see flyer let's see this one let's look at this one seems like everything here has just the same color so let's say you finish working on this flyer you want to print this flyer so you want to see what this flyer has you want to see like how it's going to appear and because of that, you, you don't know yet. So you go to your view and then you hit proof, right? So when you say proof colors, when you check it, it's going to show you how, how it will probably render when you print it. So you can see there's not much difference, but there is actually a marked difference, right? There isn't so much. There's also a shortcut for this. You don't have to go all the way from view to hit your proof colors. You can do it right from the status bar at the bottom right corner of your Coral draw. So you can see where you have the fill and your outline. You can see right at the end we have proof colors off. So when you hit it, it's going to come on. And when you hit it, it's going to go off. So with your proof colors, you can see how the design will potentially render or be printed out depending on your printers, the colors, and even uh, your monitor screen. So it might be giving you an accurate result or not depending on this, these factors. But it gives you something pretty, pretty really close to what you might get when you actually print that design so you might want to work with this sometimes when you want to export you might want to see if it will not be so disappointing or if it will be so disappointing you know depends the next thing under our view is the simulate over print so what is simulate over print well simulate over print is an action that you perform when you check it it kind of like simulates shows you how your document might appear when you overprint. An overprint is simply uh, spilling colors under a particular color. Take for example, let's say you're printing these two uh, things. Let's say you're using a traditional printer, especially for traditional printers. So you're, you're having a traditional print, yeah? And then you need uh, the color under here. You need this blue under here to be printed in full. Now remember that this pink here is kind of like obstructing some parts of the blue, but you actually want the whole blue to print out first and then have the pr uh, pink print right on top of the blue. A situation like that is what we call an over overprint, right? You want an overprint because normally when you print, when you print this without an overprint, what is supposed to display is, let's let's use something to indicate. What is supposed to display is, let me use a smart field to generate it. It's supposed to display this side only as as the blue side, and then this whole side. As the pink side you know those areas that are underneath the pink will not be printed by default because they are not visible to the eyes so there is no need to print it right but if you would insist that it, it's printed that is if you insist that the color should be like everything on this blue here should be printed and then before you could print the pink right on top of it or you could you know print the pink color right on top of it then you need to have an overlay option checked Right, and you could do that now. It's easier. You could do that now in Corel Draw by even right clicking right directly here and say any color you want it to. So let's say the color behind you want it to be uh, over. You want it to overprint. You could right click and say overprint fill. If you want the outline too to be included, you can say overprint outline as well. Right, and then if you want this guy to add here, well, this one is always going to be on in the front. You don't have to say overprint, but you can still right click and say overprint, you know, stuff like that. So now when you go to layout or view rather and say 
simulate over print what you're trying to say is show me how it's going to look like so when you check this it's going to show you ah, this is how everything is going to appear with the over print now notice that with this over print we don't still see any changes applied to this one let's try to add it here let's say i right click and then say over print fill now you see it's going to show you how it's going to appear doesn't still change so much but it actually sucks i mean the way it looks right now it sucks but the truth is it's actually going to overprint let's select both of these and right click and say overprint fill let's go back to view and overprint fill yeah okay let's check this overprint fill so let's go to view and um let's just see simulate overprint it's not giving us what I would like, ideally like it to give us, but still not a problem. All right, okay. So um, I think I think the the omission I did here was to not check proof colors because proof shows you like the rendering. So right now you can see what we are saying. So you can see at this point here, you can see how the color looks different, appears different because there is a bit of a mix between the one on top and the color behind. And that's what the overprint fill is meant to do. It's meant to mix up the colors because you're printing the blue totally and also printing the pink totally. So on that view, you have that. We might look at that in more detail in a different video. So we have proof colors, we have simulated overprint, and then we also have rasterized complex effects. Now, the idea for rasterizing complex effects is just... Um, rasterizing complex effects, the idea for that is just that what it does is it simply renders it as a as an image right it renders it as as a standalone image and what are complex effects complex effects are things like transparencies complex transparencies complex fields um, bevel effects you know and buzz effects things that are quite difficult to compute to by the um by the software right so these things are considered complex and um if you want to render them as if you want to uh, render them as or rasterize them it means if you're checking this it means you're telling it to show you how it's going to potentially look when you print it and since it's going to rasterize that that's it's going to convert everything to an image it's just going to display or show you how they are going to look like when you're done so so let's say we add the drop shadow like this and um, you know we decide that our drop shadow is going to be a, well, a single color. So our drop shadow is something like this. You know. um, I'm giving like a very much plenty, you know. And let's just say 70. We're just doing some testing, some random stuff. So you can just say, and then this field, let's say this one. We use G again, and then we use a pattern. And probably just reduce the pattern. Yeah, so we have all this. We remove the outline by right clicking there. So we have all this on one document, right? So you could just go to your layout and see, you know, view. You just go to your view and see rasterize complex effects. So it will appear that the complex effect has been turned into a picture, right? So it's just going to show you how it will render when you're done. When you're printing. So you, you can see with the proof checked and the rasterized stuff checked, this is how it's, the green is going to appear. So it will give you a vivid description or feel or look of how the whole design will turn out. So you have an idea of how it's going to, how it's going to appear. And if there's something you don't like, you might start working on changing it. Then also we have the let's uncheck this let's uncheck this proof colors and this rasterize. Then also we have under view we have the page page view. So we have page border bleed and printable area. Now if you want to see these things or not see these things, you have to check them. For the page border, this is the default. This is how it appears with this box around your page, right? If you don't want it to be there anymore, you can always take it out from page by unchecking the page border. So you just have an empty uh, kind of like empty workspace but actually your page is there but 
without the borders you cannot tell where it starts and ends unless you maybe double click on your rectangle tool to add a container right so it will show you how your page is so this is for your page border to not see your page border you do that to see the bleed area that is the area that has that you uh, you should not cross when you're designing you know the area that the printer can cut out you have to check it to so also see um, still under the page to printable area the area that you should, is recommended for you to keep your your content within uh, you could also see that especially your text you know you could bleed your images out but your text is important sometimes that you, unless you're going for a, maybe an artistic or a stylistic look then you might decide to ex extend your text but most times your safe space or your safe area is where you keep most of the things you're doing as per design in the documents so to keep it within if you need to see it so that you can regulate your design you have to go to your view under the page and check the printable area you could also check the bleed area but it's not so important right now and you can check your page border so just bring it back so under the view that those are the things you need to do here We also have the grid, so if you want to see a document grid, you check this, it's going to bring out a grid right on the document, you can see all these grids active. And if you're into logo design and stuff, you might need your grids to always be present, so you can use them to count the number of boxes, so you use them for more accuracy in your design. Right now, it's not even very accurate for me because I don't have, there is, there is a, okay, it's accurate, you can see, it's locking to grid, so that's what I'm trying to say, so you can have your designs locking them to the grid you know so you can have boxes you can create a box there you can lock them to the grid it makes it makes a lot of things easier for you because you're working with the grid for you to lock objects to grid you make sure your snap to options is make sure that your uh, document grid is checked you know in the um, snap two options right under your standard bar so to remove this you may want to go back to grid and uncheck it we also have base language so if you want to view your base language you can check it as well still under the view we have the rulers and the guidelines so the rulers are checked by default these are the rulers you can see them right at the edge of the document at the left hand side just after the toolbox and at the top just below the tabs right the names and um if you don't want them there anymore you can always uncheck them and then they will give you more space to operate especially if you feel that they don't do anything for you and also you can have your guidelines out or in depends on you and we have um the let's bring back the rulers and we have on the view menus we also have the alignment guides right so these alignment guides quite cool so let's just say we have this image and we're trying to align it let's say we have this and this i'm trying to drop this right at the center of course once you have your snap two options checked it means that there will also be snapping and alignment all right done automatically rather almost automatically so in this case if you grab an object unless i want to center this on this if i grab this from the center and move it towards the center it indicates that this is the center so it's easy to do that because of your snap two options right but let's just say the snap two is turned off or even if it were not turned off there are some ways if there are some options that are not checked you might still find it difficult to work with alignment properly unless you use the longer processes or longer um, steps right so let me show you an example of what i'm trying to say here so when you have this circle let's make an addition of it i just use my plus key you know let's make two more additions you know so let's say we have these four circles let's say for this circle and this circle i need them to line up these two i need them to line up also i also need these ones to align to the bottom and these ones to align to the top so what do we do if you go to your view menu you can do uh, alignment guides and check it so alignment guide becomes check so it's a guide for alignment so when you grab this and you move what you notice that it begins to display lines across alignment lines so right now you see it's showing me that i am aligning to the center of the circle at the top and also the center of the circle 
at the right hand side so if i leave it here it feels that it's almost perfect not very perfect so let's drop it again so So you can see that's aligned here and that's aligned here. And so this one, we could also grab this one here and you know shift it. So you see that. So you see that. So that's alignment. So this one is now aligned to this, you know, edge to edge. If you draw a straight line, if you select this and click here, and maybe hold your L. Uh, hold your shift and let's pull it out a little bit if you hold shift and select this and press bottom or simple if you grab this one too and just move it towards the edge you see there's there are the two circles are sitting right on the edge if you make an addition and also grab it at the, the top here you see that both of them are also sitting at the top if you create a straight line like so and also move it from here to the edge of the circle quadrant especially you notice that they also have they are also sitting on the same quadrant and if you do that on all the sides as well pretty much the same thing all right so you see that so you see that the four circles this this they are lined up perfectly this this lined up perfectly and they are also spaced up spaced out perfectly so the breezing what makes it possible to align this without having to use your manual um, alignment options is because the, under the view menu we have the alignment guides checked and then also we have still on this we have dynamic guides which is also this but also provides more angles for alignment dynamic guide provides more angles and more relationships than just the um than just the alignment guides for the dynamic guide it gives you more so you can see you could align on the you know align things diagonally you see that so you can do stuff like that you can make diagonal alignments you can make comparisons you can do stuff so it kind of like brings more relationship between objects when you're working with the dynamic alignment so everything works to align your objects better using your dynamic and your um, alignment guides for your view menu we also have the snap to options which i just explained that we have all this when you when you check all of them it means that you can snap things to objects to your document grid to your baseline grid to your guidelines to objects you can snap objects to page as well so depending on the number of things you check you can snap objects to them that you could align objects to them automatically by just moving them so if you grab let's say this one because of them and it's also because of your snap to options that that everything here has a label when you hit the center when you're close to the center you see it tells you center when you go to the node at the edge it tells you node it is because your snap to options are active when you click on this snap off here nothing is going to be um, indicated you cannot see center blah, blah, blah. so anything anywhere you grab it it just grabs and you cannot really align to any parts you know of your document so even for your for your um, alignment guides and dynamic guides to work to work your snap to options must be active so when you make it when you turn this on then you can actually align if you grab this to center you can also align to you know center as well you see that so you can do edge you could align to edge center to center you could do center to edge see you know you could also grab the edge of this one and align to that edge so everything works nice when you're working with your snap to options, right? So like I said, you could also align to grid. So when you grab this and you're moving, you notice it's moving, it's trying to align to grid. You see that it's telling you grid, it's aligning to the grids here. Yeah? Right now the grid are just invisible. You you have not enabled them, but they are actually there. So when you enable them, you can actually find the document grid here. So it's also trying its best to align to the document grid, as you can see. So you could also align to page as well. Let's say you want to draw a full box, like a triangle, um, rectangle, a box. You could start from the node there and draw all the way down to the edge here. 
and that's it. You've completed a rectangle that's just as big as a page, right? So everything works with the um, snap to options active. The snap to options help you align objects to one another without the manual process of having to do it with your through your object menu and the align and distribute option. Then um, we can also look at so with your snap off as well you can turn off all the snapping so it gives you freedom to really express yourself without having to having to be forced to align to something or an object. And then we have the document navigator which refers to the pages here the navigator here right here this this bar here it's called the document navigator that's where you move from page two to page one and you can add more pages and stuff if you want don't want it to be visible you can always turn it off from there and to go off and then the last thing we have there is the scroll bars which represents these scroll bars on the sides as well if you don't want them as well you could also go to there and uncheck them and then you just have a free document where you might be using just a shortcut to move like a h and the rest of them you know so might be a happy thing depends on you so but this is practically it for, for the view menu the wireframe the views right the full screen previews the selected preview the multi-page and the single page view the zoom in zoom out and the zoom to fit proof colors simulating over prints rasterizing complex effects page options grid options rulers guidelines alignment guides dynamic guides snap all the way down to scroll bars these are all the things we have under the view menu and i hope you learned a thing or two today don't forget to like and share this video and you can always comment if you have a video request you want me to do i, I think i got a couple of requests from uh, a couple of people I'll, I'll be sure to upload them so you guys can actually see um, the stuff that you guys want to see